All right, everybody. Welcome to the, well, 920 panel. De dealing with producers, directors, writers, Connecticut-based production companies and all. I am your humble moderator. My name is Brian Ellsworth. And I'll have my uh, humble panelists introduce themselves, starting with the lovely lady to my right. Good evening. My name is Dale Fody. I'm the associate producer and production manager for Tower Isle Productions, and I'm here to represent our very first motion feature film called A Dance for Grace, which is also, uh, yeah, we have someone in the audience who was in the movie, Gail Bugeha. And um, it's the very first uh, dance drama featuring reggae dance hall. So we filmed all throughout Connecticut, but the movie actually takes place in a small town in Georgia. Uh, but we filmed through Connecticut and New York, and also we filmed a good portion of it in Jamaica so that our dancers could learn actual dance hall. So we had a bunch of white kids learning dance hall, and they succeeded, and the film's a great movie, has a great story behind it. So hope everybody goes to see it. I'm uh, Rena Venturi from, um, I own the Actors Gym and Talent. We're a casting company and we teach actors. But I'm here representing TriPig Studios. I'm the Vice President of Talent and Promotion. So I'm here to talk a little bit about our production facility and what we have to offer. And uh, we have 20,000 square feet and three studios and uh, all ready for you guys. My name is Gary Fierro. I am the founder of Roadwork Pictures and we are based out of Central Connecticut, Brown, Connecticut. I'm Aaron Vanuk, oops, excuse me, and um, I'm the president of Legion Films. We've been in operation for 10 years now, and we specialize in horror films, and um, that's, uh, we, we pretty much are based in Connecticut as well, just like everyone else here, and we have a lot of Legion members here today, so it's been great to see everybody. Thank you. My name is Matthew Giovannucci. I'm a producer writer with the Roadwork Pictures. Um, I've been, we've been together for about a year and a half, and I'm working on, uh, we're representing four projects tonight. The first is Ditch. It's a uh, ultra low budget comedy that we shot about a year ago. Um, uh, Rising Star, which is a picture we're shooting in Hartford, October 3rd through the 22nd. We're using all Connecticut film industry training program people, all Connecticut actors. Um, all Connecticut, it's all Connecticut funded. Uh, I'm also we're also working on a couple uh, short films. First is Firefly Jar, which deals with a child's uh, imagination. And we're also shooting another uh, short comedy this uh, December called FreezerBang.com. Okay. I thought I would start the panel by asking a general question among you all. Um, basically, uh, what made you, uh, you know, as I said, being filmmakers and being passionate about your craft, how, you know, what made you uh, start out uh, your respective companies, uh, you know, your chief motivations, and... Um, you know, basically, what made you want to do it, you know, in Connecticut, let's say, as a point of fact? Starting with you, Dale. Well, I was asked to be on this movie because um, I'm an executive uh, assistant at Pitney Bowes, so I have some experience doing that. But I also took uh, 30 years of dance and, and graduated from modeling school, John Casablancas, and took acting. So I was asked by um, the producer if I wanted to help out behind the scenes and also I have a small acting role in the film so um, they decided to film throughout Connecticut because the screenwriter and producer although they were Jamaican born they also lived in Connecticut and they found that um, there were some beautiful parts of Connecticut that could pass off for this small town in Georgia uh, well I actually new at this. I've been doing it for 49 years. Um, I started this uh, as a child actor with Paramount Studios and was a day player, as it were, back in those days. Uh, and this is pretty much all I know. It's all I've ever done. People said, hey, have you ever done anything else? Well, I was in retail for about three days once. Um, yeah. That didn't go well. Point is, um, I'm from California, and uh, I was uh, directing shows in New York, and I was directing films in New York, working for Showtime and uh, Cinemax and doing little films for them. And I decided I wanted to teach acting, so I moved here to teach for Yale. 
Um, they wanted me to teach full time, and I said, nah, that doesn't work for me. Plus, they wanted us to do uh, stuff that wasn't really in the real world, helping uh, actors audition. And I'm pretty much an actor's advocate. Uh, I joined up with Tripex Studios um, and realized, wow, they've got an amazing studio here. We've got everything that you could possibly want. Uh, started my own company, started teaching acting, started representing actors. And um, here I am in Connecticut from California, still trying to figure it all out. All right, I've lived in Connecticut my entire life, so I started getting interested in film um, throughout middle school when I had to do projects for uh, tech ed, and from there I went to uh, Middlesex Community College in Middletown, and I took the broadcasting uh, degree, and from there we did projects similar to uh, short film projects, um, just like I did in middle school and high school. And then from there, I just started making short films. Um, my first short film is based, based off of an H.P. Lovecraft um, short story. It's called Pickman's Model. And that actually won uh, several awards. Um, and that, that basically pushed me into uh, wanting to keep making uh, more and more movies and basically trying to outdo myself every time. And from there, I just uh, uh, finished a feature film called Ditch. And that is currently finishing up, and I am in talks with a uh, possible distributor in LA um, who might want to uh, buy it off of me. And that's where I am now. Well, for us, uh, the, the core members of Legion Films, we actually started all out as screenwriters. And uh, we realized that uh, you know, the difficulty of getting a, a script uh, sold. So we decided to make the movies ourselves. And uh, we decided to learn actually everything ourselves as well. So uh, we started in 2000, and we didn't make our first uh, good short film, I would say, till 2005. So it took us a good five years to figure out how to do this well. And then we started rattling off a number of uh, short films that were picked up uh, by Comcast for uh, distribution, which was exciting for us. But um, we went again to feature films, which we've done. And uh, we just finished our third film, which is Demon of La Tehran. Again, of course, another horror. And, uh, but uh, we pretty much, we do it all ourselves. We uh, make the movies ourselves. We actually distribute ourselves. Over 10 years, we built a pretty extensive fan base. So at this point, we don't even have to shop our movies around, which has been nice. But um, for me, um, one thing interesting me about is I'm actually legally blind. So um, if you've seen the movies we make, it's probably a good thing. But um, <laughs> yeah, so it helps me out. But uh, so, well, yeah, so that's pretty much, we started screenwriters and uh, did it all ourselves, 10 years running, and we're going strong still. Um, let's put it. I uh, decided to become a producer uh, because the best way to get work is to create your own work. Um, uh, you know, I tried finding jobs at A and E, WWE, um, ESPN, which is two miles from my house, and uh, they're, they're, it's really hard. And so I decided to, hey, screw it, I'll make my own films, and that's uh, that's how I started. Hey Aaron, I got a question for you. You mentioned uh, a demon, a demon of how do you say? Yep. Yep. There we go. How do you say it? Yep. Demon, of demon of demon of La Tehran. That's yeah. our third uh, feature film. We uh, the first was Mind Morgue, second was Severed In, and now Demon of La Tehran. Yeah. So, so basically, are you horror specialists, or are you going into horror genre because you know it's always marketable? Pretty much. Yeah, that's a good question. And we actually uh, start our short films uh, had nothing to do with horror at all. Um, so they, they got us the attention that we were looking for. And then once we realized uh, that we were going to take everything into self-distribution, um, the, the horror market is uh, just complete. We're in a completely different world than uh, anything else in the film industry. So our, our, with the way we would market our movies is, um, you know, there's the infrastructure is already built in the horror genre. So um, it w worked out well because not only do we love it, we have a passion for the horror movies, but it's also uh, the infrastructure was there. So we were able to get in there, and uh, that's where we are now. Okay. Reno, next question is for you. How would you evaluate the Connecticut talent market up till now? I mean, and what is it you try to instill in them the most? Uh, it's kind of amazing. I'm, I'm always amazed at how much talent is here and how many people just don't really realize um, how to get connected and how to be out there. So that's why I became a di an, an actor's advocate. Um, the, the, the talent pull here is tremendous. I'm a casting director. I just cast three projects last week, major projects, and I used everybody from Connecticut, local actors. Um, and my best advice is that um, they don't cast a lot of uh, films from your basement. 
So pretty much you have to be out there, you have to be seen, you have to come to people like me, you have to not be embarrassed by giving me your headshot. It's okay. I always love when actors walk up to me and go, oh, would it be okay if I gave you my headshot? I'm like, come on, this is what I want. This is good. I have about 3,000 actors at my disposal right now and I would love to have 3,010 and 4,000 and so on and so forth. So I say get out there and do it, be seen. Okay, now, Gary, you uh, were the director of uh, Firefly Jar, and I have seen the trailer. It is amazing, so I would recommend uh, see that trailer you know, anytime you can. Uh, you've been described as a very visual filmmaker. Uh, how would you care to respond to that? Um, well, Firefly, uh, I, ju well, I just recently finished a, um, another H.P. Lovecraft short that I did called The Silver Key, and that entire movie runs about 15 minutes, and it's nothing um, but music. And um, basically, there's a, a lot of forums online right now talking about it. That everybody's saying it's one of the, the best Lovecraft short films that they have seen so far. Um, it just got accepted into the H.P. Lovecraft Film Festival for this year. And that movie, I had to basically take a story and without any dialogue, make it very compelling. And um, through music and emotion, I was able to uh, pull in um, basic emotions. Like, like everyone feels when, when you watch a dramatic movie, you can sometimes, uh, through music and everything, you understand what the character is like. And so with the help of that, um, it aided in a very good like visual uh, film that I think the storytelling in it, it, it tells its own even without dialogue. And now for you, Matt, I mean, uh, since you've worked uh, with Gary, and you've also, as you said, you did a movie called Ditch. Um, how would you uh, compare your experiences? Hello. Oh, there we go. Um, well, Gary is a very talented filmmaker. And uh, as I said before, you have to um, create your own work. So I started off and I found the most talented people, uh, or some of the most talented people in Connecticut, uh, namely Gary Fierro and uh, Marty Lang are two of them. Um, and Gary is a very talented uh, young filmmaker. He's only he's 23, 24? He's 24, and he's already worked on uh, over a dozen short films. He's done a feature film, um, and we're about to do another uh, short film, uh, Firefly Jar, which our goal is to get it a uh, uh, nominated for an Academy Award. All right, Dale, now back to you. How would you elaborate on a dance for grace? Are you one who uh, strongly feels using passion, you know, performing arts, you know, like a la fame to tell your stories or um, anything different besides that? Do you, do, you, do you think performing arts is your particular genre as a filmmaker? Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I, I <laughs> yes, I, I, I would do another movie that has nothing to do with performing arts, but if I had to pick one, this for me had been a perfect fit because of my background. Okay, good. All right. And now, uh, once again, back to uh, general questions. Um, what essential quality do you find creates, say, a compelling story? or in your case, Reno, a compelling talent. What qualities do you personally look for, all of you? Um, well, myself, I will say I've had the pleasure of actually working with um, these two gentlemen to my right, and I've done casting for them. Um, and so I'm always looking for someone that stands out, makes a difference, somebody who also thinks beyond the box and is creative and willing to be out there. Um, I think that's the hardest thing because a lot of people say they want to be in this industry, but they don't want to do the work. So I look for actors that understand that this is a business and that it's called show business for a reason. So I just want to say that I enjoyed working with the two of them and I think they're, they're, they're kind of amazing directors. Okay. And now for the rest of you. Um, speaking on an actor standpoint, um, I really find it compelling when actors like I for for ditch I posted on mandy.com I need actors and I can't pay anything unfortunately and they are willing to take their time on like months on end even like for me like two to two and a half years 
and t take time out of their lives to uh, do a film and complete it and have for no pay. And to me, that, that's awesome. I mean, um, that, that's what I find is uh, compelling. Um, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, what uh, Reno was going over. And um, we, uh, for in the horror genre, we, uh, the fans pretty much, they like a specific type of actress in particular. So if you see any of our movie covers, you'll, you'll get an idea. But um, they, you know, the act, we, we have been really trying to uh, get uh, better quality actors. And uh, when we started uh, doing some bigger casting calls, uh, we f for our, when we started our feature films for Mind Morgue, we, um, we realized uh, that so many of the uh, cast members that were on the movie were part of, they kept telling me us that they're part of this actor's gym. And, you know, Legion Films, we don't get out too much. So um, we didn't, had no idea what this actor's gym was. I thought it was a fitness center. And, <laughs> and then, then we hear this guy's name, and uh, we find out about Tripeg Studios. So we've been uh, doing some work down there. And uh, pretty much every feature film that we've worked on since then, we've used many of Reno's actors, and uh, they've been amazing. So um, we, we give him all the plugs we can in every premiere screening that we do wherever we go. Because uh, it's pretty much, you know, the way we see it is our, our future project, we're just going to ask him, and he can give us the actors. Of course, we still have to find uh, the female models, but he gives us the good quality actors. <laughs> I have models. <laughs> then we're all set. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a model. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you're a model? I'm a, a model if anybody's interested in plus uh, size models. Okay. I, uh, oh, don't you worry. I'll send you more than that. Okay. Um, Give us a medium shot at least. Yeah, a medium you? shot from Ariel. It was expensive. Uh, uh, I just want to touch on, on uh, uh, screenplays real quick. Um, uh, the thing I look for is uh, does the screenplay have heart? Does the screenplay mean something to the writer? Um, and you can, you can see that on the page. And uh, the moment I read uh, Firefly Jar... Uh, after Gary wrote it, um, it was probably one of the most beautiful scripts I'd ever read in my life. I've, I've, I mean, I've only read about 50 or 60, but it was wonderful. <laughs> so, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, this thing, oh, this thing is still on. Mm. All right, let me adjust the question slightly. Okay, you've talked about the essential qualities that you would like a screenplay to have, but then again, you also touched upon the idea of, a, of say, a genre governing perhaps what kind of script you're going to have. So let me ask you this. Do you, do you like, for the sake of distribution, for the sake of getting a distribution deal, would you, I mean, would you basically let the idea of the genre, what type of film you wish to make, be your deciding factor over the type of story that you personally would like to tell? Uh, I, take this one. Um, I am Firefly Jar is basically a, it's a drama film and it relies heavily on the score. And I searched for about two years to find a composer, and I actually found one that was from the Hart School of Music um, in Hartford. His name is Francesco De Cherico, and he's, he's an awesome composer, and he, he composed Ditch uh, for me. And I brought him onto this project because what he mainly uh, does is a lot of piano and violin and strings and the emotion is there. So I basically tailored a movie to his music, and that's where I basically wrote Firefly to his music. And from there, I basically, it's obviously a drama, so I'm going to be putting it into festivals that will take uh, drama films, and, and that you usually see um, people that win at those festivals are dramas, and um, so I'm basically going for that genre. Okay, I think at this point, um, I've asked enough questions. How about anybody in the audience? Would anybody like to raise their hand and ask the panelists a question or two? Oh, lovely lady over here. Um, I'm currently accepting donations for the film right now until October, and if I can't fulfill what I want for my budget, then we're going to hit spring. But if I do have my money by then, October, we will be casting in October. There's around um, five to six parts in the movie that will have lines, and then everything is just uh, extras. Do you um, have staff actors in the uh, We are trying to um, bring in at least one well-known actor, so that will, event that will be SAG. And um, 
Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take on SAG actors, and they will get paid what, um, what's required. And so a lot of us can't really believe that we're in SAG unless we have a contract. Right, exactly. Everything's going to be legit. It's going to be fully contracted. Um, all legalities are going to be set down in stone, and uh, it's going to be fully professional. That's why I'm doing this movie. It has to be professional. Everything that I've done prior, I believe, to me, it wasn't good enough, and I need to keep uh, just making something better and... That's where SAG and everything comes into play. Okay, how about anybody else out there? Hmm? Okay. Going once. Oh, over here. My website? No, my website is called roadworkpictures.com. Roadwork, yes. No, uh, it says road word on here, but don't get mistaken. It's a K, <laughs> not a D. Uh, type is a little bit small. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got two people from this side. Can I at least get one person from this side? A volunteer, please. There we go. <laughs> Demon a lot to run. Yeah, um, pretty much uh, it's a, a third feature film, and uh, the, the story is about uh, demonic possession. So in this project, uh, we've done uh, in the, pr the previous projects, we're more of a dark humor. But uh, this one, we are going more for the, uh, the horror factor. So it's going to be a little bit different from what our fans are used to. So hopefully it will go over pretty well. We still did put some humor in there, but for the most part, uh, we really wanted to focus on the possession of a, a, a soul. And uh, that uh, came out real. We, set, we shot at a uh, mill house that was built in the 1900s, so it had this real uh, creepy factor to it. So uh, that worked out well, and of course all the other... The, the comedy stuff and you know the where the the genre stuff we shot at a at a strip club so that uh, you know we'll give them that that but we really try to build it up the horror on this one so, so it should be different. Right. Oh, man in the back. For the horror, there's um. It's, there's so much more that's already there. So you have the, everything from the micro distributors to the mid-level all the way up to the, uh, the upper level. So um, we, uh, we've, it's, you know, we, we pretty much uh, go, just go to any convention. You know, the, we go to the chiller conventions. We go to other of the larger conventions uh, like the room org. And um, pretty much everything is in place. So, you know, it's like once you get into the genre and people recognize you, then that's when the fans start to flock to you. When we first started making the short films, uh, they were in more in the drama area, and they're, they're, they just go, no, we couldn't, I couldn't figure out what to do with them. You know, so if we made a drama film, I couldn't tell you what, to, what we could do with it, because the, um, unless there is a bigger actor or if it's very well done, I have no clue. But a horror film, there's uh, so many different ways that you can get that out there. And to whether it's a micro distributor such as Brain Damage, who who is a very good one, or even going up the ladder, uh, even all the way up to uh, Lionsgate, Maverick, or so forth. So they're all there. They love horror. There's so many horror fans, and uh, it's just uh, they're they're asking for more and more material all the time. So it's very different from any other genre. And uh, believe me, I've looked into it over 10 years. <laughs> yeah, okay. Any more hands out there? Going once. There we go. This is good. No, actually, um, actually, no, we are. So um, we have, uh, there's uh, another feature film that we're looking at called The Uncoded that uh, is a possibility, but then there's another series that we're looking at to, uh, we want to start something in the wintertime, but uh, if it's horror, yeah, we definitely want to take a look at it. Because uh, that's what we do. We know what to do with it. Yeah, thank you. Yes, there is. Yep. So it's uh, just legionfilms.com. And um, the general is, um, email is mailbox at legionfilms.com. And our address is right there. So it's just, yeah, we're not uh, picky at all. You know, so it's just send us anything. And uh, we'll be happy to look at it. There's really not many specific guidelines. We're very, very independent, user friendly. Yeah. Go, Matt. All right. Hello. Hello. Uh, how many people here are aware of the uh, Connecticut Film Industry Tax Credit? Everybody? Everybody? Um, I, I know I'm not at that $100,000 level, but I'd like to be, and I'm 
regardless, I'm still going to probably make films in this state, but we are in a position where we may lose the tax credits. And uh, these studios, these people, they're going to come to the state and they will create jobs no matter what position you guys are in. Um, and please just do everybody a favor and take a look at uh, whoever's running for governor. Take a look. If they support the tax credits, support them. I am a registered Republican, but I am probably going to vote for a uh, Democrat this year. So um, just just look into that. Thank you. All right. I'd like to direct a question over here to Dale. Dale, uh, for, your, for the particular type of film that you have, des describe the casting process. Mainly for this film, um, you know, because it's our very first film, the difficult part was trying to find dancers that were white and can do dance hall. And so we have two girls from Sweden that were so into dance hall and traveled to Jamaica a million times. And two of our dancers come from Canada and one from New York and one from Connecticut that was a hip hop dancer and we taught him dance hall. But it's um, a totally different style dance. So that was the, har the hardest part. Um, and casting the lead characters, our lead care actor is also the producer and co-director. So um, he's been acting a very long time. And to me, it's uh, about a presence. When you don't have celebrities that you're using in your, your brand new film, you want people to go see it. So you need someone with a big presence. And, and both of our, our lead actor and actress are, have a very good presence and their acting is really good. So to me, that's the most important thing. Uh, question over here. It, I would say it's most comparable to hip hop, um, and it's mainly in the Caribbean, in the in Jamaica. It's a totally different type of dance, like you've never seen before, actually. But if you if you're going to relate it to anything, it would be closest to hip hop. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, I haven't heard from her yet. <laughs> hmm? Oh, you'll be next. <laughs> and you want to do that, why? <laughs> Sadly, you know, I have a lot of people that work for me, and I have some, I just brought in um, Emily Shulman from Small Wonder, and she was Caddy Woodlawn and all that. She's coming to do classes for me, and she was a, she became a main top agent. She said the union was dying, so she was having a lot of problem, uh, all of them, especially SAG, yeah. Because they're casting right now, I cast, I'm going to say, about 80% non-union, and I get a lot more money for people than when I cast a 20% union. So people are always in a hurry, and I get a lot of people that say, oh, well, I got my SAG card. I, they don't know how to act yet, but they, they were background for 20 films. And I said, we well, realize a tree could do that. I mean, it's great experience to be background once or twice, but don't be in a hurry to get your union card, because a lot of times it gets you in trouble. Um, but it is quite expensive. It, it can be up to $2,400 to, to join. Reno, so. Reno. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Reno, what is, what, what is the popularity of, say, Financial Core over several years ago? Well, um, FICOR is, um, is anybody familiar with FICOR, what that is? It means you can be union and you can work a non-union project. However, if you try to call SAG, and ask them some information about it. They just love it when you call that. They'll put you on hold and pretty much disconnect you a lot. <laughs> um, but I do have some actors that do FICOR and they do both. It just basically means that when you join FICOR, you cannot vote no uh, as a SAG person and you don't get their newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so um, uh, it has become very popular just in recent years, and it is official, it is legal, it has been passed. So you can actually become a union actor and work non-union projects if you become FICOR. So but it, it's, it's worth looking into. You can get information online, but it's not going to be easy, I'll tell you right now. A very good friend of mine is the president of SAG right now, and so he would hate if he heard me saying this, but it is true. You, you can join in and... Uh, um, <laughs> it was my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> that was a death threat. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is called blackmail, Reno. <laughs> I'm retired union myself, um, AEA, AFTRA, and SAG. 
Um, and if I need to do a project, I have them take my card out of retirement if they want to pay me, and I make them pay to put it back in a retirement. So, you know, there's, there's lots of ways around it, but I'm telling you, the majority of jobs out now, I just cast uh, a national commercial and I just did two regional commercials that were all non union. And the actors, when I hired them, said, Oh my God, you're going to pay me how much? I would never get that union. I'm like, Yeah, I know. Um, because a lot of the stuff we're doing is coming in non union, non union. Everything from in, uh, industrials all the way to feature film are coming that way. Okay, uh, opening up more questions. Anyway, well, you're just full of questions tonight, aren't you? No. Well, actors, Jim, um, you uh, basically I initially just started offering classes, but I've been unofficially managing people for a number of years, probably about 20 years, because like I said, I'm an actor's advocate. So right now, I'm just offering classes. I'm getting ready to expand into official. Uh, I do get breakdowns. I do get all the information. I do send people out. Um, but, but Connecticut's a tough state, I got to tell you. Uh, in order for me to be bonded by this state, I had to get a $500,000 bond and another $100,000 bond whereas I never had to do that in any other state. So um, I'm always interested in people that are talented, that have um, something to offer. So just contact me through the actorsgym.net, um, call me direct, uh, ho however you'd like to do that. But we do a lot of stuff. And because I'm at Tripeg Studios, we do a lot of casting there as well. Okay, and we produce quite a few things at Tripeg. Has anybody ever worked at Tripeg? I mean, we have three sound studios, infinity walls, green screens, dressing rooms, editing bays, uh, conference rooms. All the rooms are wired. We have sets. We have special effects, largest pyrotechnics house in um, New England, all in one spot. And a lot of people don't know it's there. It's kind of the best kept secret. We're located in Hamden, actually. Uh, once in a while, people find out. We had David Beckham there not that long ago, and people decided that they found out where we were. Um, so <laughs> we do get a lot of people there. Thank you. I saw another lovely lady raise her hand over here. Go ahead. No. no. All right, then I'll go over here then. Anybody else raising your hands over here? Hmm? Come on. All right, you again. She's right there. Hmm? I don't think she's dressed for it. Hmm? I'm a dancer, but I don't do dance hall. <laughs> Absolutely. We have a trailer at TowerIslandProductions.com or a DanceForGrace.com. They they actually connect. Or if you go to YouTube and you plug in a Dance for Grace, we have a trailer. It's very good. And we also have a music soundtrack. We have our own music featured on there. A lot of it is reggae. Um, so please watch the trailer. It's excellent. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Call into the audience one more time. Okay. More questions? We have a panel here that's so eager to answer them. Come on. Oh, there we go. What is my background? Well, I'm, uh, I'm currently a moderator at the film industry mixer. That's about as far back as I go, I think. <laughs> oh, so you say, Reno. Um, well, actually, I am, a, I am an, uh, an actor. I have been in SAG for 12 years. I'm also a member of AFTRA. So I can kind of agree a lot with what Reno is saying at the moment. Um, when I j first joined, FICOR wasn't even brought up. I mean, I didn't even know it existed. And when I had brought up the subject a few years later with the local chapter in Boston, they nearly bit my head off. They, they, they were like, you know, accusing me of being like, you know, like breaking picket lines or, you know, that, that, the way they view that. You know, I, I was, it was like something that they just did not want to talk about, that they wanted buried at any cost. But as far as um, my own background, I've been an actor. I've been persevering for years. I, um, as you can see, I uh, did a project for Sec Film, The Curse of Mike Arood, if anybody had ever seen that project. Um, it was a wonderful uh, period piece that we had shot in Norwich and Groton, which uh, I will humbly say has uh, been sweeping the awards at the film festival circuit for about the last two years. But I'm o as, as any actor, I'm always hungry for the next role, always trying to get the next role. And um, I don't know, I'm hoping maybe somebody on the panel may like to use me for the next role. That's kind of one of the reasons I'm doing this. You know, but, uh, well, yeah, no. yeah, he does. Reno, Reno's a good sport about that. But um, anyway, that's pretty much who I am. And um, I'm once turning the attention back over to you, the lovely audience. So 
Would you like to elaborate before I have my panelists sum it up? Going once. Going twice. Okay, going three times. In which case, I will ask our uh, panelists here, one by one, um, to you know, offer any uh, thoughts in uh, conclusion and maybe talk about any upcoming projects and um, elaborate on anything in general, starting with you. We uh, plan on doing upcoming projects, but we don't have it. We, we are trying to finish up this one. The movie's been completed. We are actually in negotiations uh, currently with the Caribbean for Caribbean distribution. And we're seeking distribution in the U.S. as well. And, and um, this movie is a dance movie, which there are so many out there, but it's very different than all the others. In fact, we had a screening in New Milford, Connecticut recently, and we passed out questionnaires. And the audience was uh, very welcoming and receptive to the movie, and they clapped a lot. And the questionnaires were all, the answers were all very favorable, I have to say, on a whole. Um, and everyone checked off that it was original, and I was expecting someone to say it's just another dance movie, but it it really is not. So, come out and see our movie when it come when it's in the theaters, please. I can't wait. It's called, it's called A Dance for Grace, and if you go to Tower Isle, that's I S L E Productions dot com or A Dance for Grace dot com, you can find both websites. They connect so. Oh, yes. Yep. Is it for anybody? You may have an answer. Should I challenge? Well, I can. Yeah. It's the you know, I'm just going to go without the mic. All right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't rely on technology. I'm a theater-trained actor. I can reach thousands. So <laughs> I'm going to let you know like right now, at Sex Films, as I said, one of our chief goals is to indoctrinate people into the art of filmmaking at any level. You want to be a producer. You want to be a, you want to be a director. You want to be an editor, whatever. We offer seminars. We offer ground floor training on all these levels. And for those who people want to be actors as well, we have a huge database by which we encourage actors to go out there. We say right now, you want to make a film? Work on these films. Work on the short films. Build yourself up from there. Start the technique of acting on film because it is sure different than acting on the stage. So. My biggest challenge uh, building uh, my business as an actor has basically been, you know, just trying to secure the roles, but as I said, being a uh, union most often has proven to be a handicap. I have been offered roles, well-paying roles, and I've had to turn them down because, you know, I didn't want to break the union rule one, as they call it, general rule one, don't work without a contract. And I have been very loyal. But at the same time, it has been, it has been costing me roles. Now, don't get me wrong. I I'm, I'm loyal. You know, I mean, I've, I've been steadfast because when I was a non-union actor, it can, you know, it's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. You can work a lot, but sometimes the conditions aren't always agreeable. So what I would say right now is, for any actor, just get that next role, whatever it may be. Tra you know, no, no, no experience is wasted in any aspect of the business. That's all I'll say. Okay, so moving on. My biggest challenge um, filming throughout Connecticut uh, was when I got a very long list from the screenwriter to find locations that resembled a rural town in Georgia. And without any money, because this is our very first movie, I had to put on some charm and f go all over Connecticut and ask people if they knew of where I could find a dated main drag and a really good country bar, and we would have to ask them if we could shoot on their locations for no charge. And we actually um, had a couple of our actors that live in New York seeking some of the um, locations in the meantime. And they wanted an awful lot of money in New York. So it, it actually turned out really well because I found every single location in Connecticut and they didn't charge us. We even had um, a main street in Torrington 
closed down. We just had to pay the, the cops to be on each either side of the street. But that was, to me, that was the biggest challenge. But it worked out really well in the end, and I have to say it was great filming throughout Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to uh, sum up our filmmakers over here. Okay, would you like to uh, say anything in conclusion? Um, well, going back to difficulty as well, it's finding money as well. Yeah. Um, that's oh, everybody's, <laughs> like usual, like filmmakers' biggest difficulty is uh, raising the money. And uh, for Firefly Jar, we have partnered with our sponsor out in LA. They're called From the Heart Productions, and we just got fiscal sponsorship. And what that means is every donation that comes into our film is a tax write-off because it makes us a nonprofit organization. And I actually switched from doing a Kickstarter campaign to doing the fiscal sponsorship only because it gives back uh, more to the people. And um, yeah. Um, for, for us, um, the uh, pretty much we uh, the the hardest part for Legion Films was when we uh, tried trying to trying to go deal with the uh, the business aspect of the filmmaking industry. You know, we really enjoyed uh, making the movies and producing them, but it wasn't until we uh, focused on the uh, the business part that we got to the level where we are now. So it's um, it's uh, the business part's a pain. You know, we that's that's where all the uh, you know all the financial aspects come into play and it's just it's normally not what filmmakers do you know it's no, usually not how we think so we um you know because we, we we had to backtrack and actually think like uh, business people because we made our short films and uh it took a while it took a lot of passion a lot of uh we loved them other people loved them but then it's you know we're still broke no money you know so it wasn't until we said all right we if we want to hit this certain number of sales per month we want to do this many international this many domestic now how do we get there mm -hmm. and um how do we make ourselves different because as you know there's every there's so many people making movies and our movies aren't better than anybody else's it's just a matter of um what you do what you do unique and uh what how you can connect with your fans and that's that's that part sucks that's that's the pain in the butt to do so uh, that takes a long time, takes a lot of, that's, that's an everyday process that we go through at Legion Films. So every day we're trying to figure out how we're going to hit those sales per month. We take it per month. And uh, so it's all, all business. And that's, that's the part that's hard. So, um, but, uh, but, and that's why they stick me mostly with that part. You know, they, they, everyone else gets to make the movies. But <laughs> I can't see, so I do the business. But... <laughs> So pretty much, but that's that's the hardest part, and I think uh, any filmmaker will tell you the same thing: just raising the money, dealing with the taxes, dealing with all the accounting, everything that goes into that. But that's the only way that I can see that you're able to, uh, if you want to have any kind of <laughs> money at all, you know, that's that's the only way I've seen you can do it. Hello, hey, I want to reiterate what um, Gary said uh, for the fundraising. Uh, there's three other things you guys can do. Uh, to raise funds uh, to shoot your features or shorts. Uh, there's Kickstarter.com, which he mentioned, where uh, people give you money in exchange for a DVD or a CD or a special thanks in the credits. And you can raise, the people have raised up to $50,000 to shoot a feature doing this, but you really, really have to be badass and to go out there and be gung-ho about it. There's also a Another fiscal sponsorship site, uh, just like the one Gary mentioned, called IFP, Independent Feature Project, ifp.org. Um, you can go on there and you can sign up uh, to get uh, be a nonprofit umbrella, and you can get tax deductible donations. The biggest part about the tax deductible do, uh, deductible donations is that you can get grants, and grants are huge. Uh, go out, become a nonprofit, and uh, just buy a grant writing book, and you can get twenty, thirty thousand dollars to shoot a feature. If you're just, you just gotta be good at it. Um, and uh, I think that's. Uh, oh, we also have. Um, we're shooting another film uh, in October, October third through the twenty second, called Rising Star. We're using all film industry training program people, uh, all local Connecticut actors, and um, it's gonna be great. And uh, we hope to get it into. Uh, Sundance in uh, Toronto uh, in 2012. So I just want to say the hardest 
thing for me coming from California was establishing a reputation here. Luckily, I'm connected really well in New York. So teaching, <laughs> acting, being a coach, those kinds of things was great. So luckily, when it came to casting, I already had a reputation. So that was awesome. Um, as far as the studio that I'm also here representing, I think a lot of people don't know we exist. Even though we have a great reputation, we've shot huge projects, little projects, and, and so on. And so what we've done as a studio is we have now offering indie filmmaker packages. Whereas a lot of times studio space isn't affordable, infinity screens, green screens, those kinds of things. Plus we have full production uh, facility there where you can build anything you want. So now we're offering special rates. So that was, that was really hard for us. Uh, last but not least, making sure that the film credit stayed intact. Uh, and with Sect Film and Tripex Studios, we produced actually a video um, that is on YouTube if you check it out um, to save the tax credit. And uh, apparently the right people saw it because it did buy us a bunch of time. So I think that those, those are basic challenges. It always boils down to money and knowing that these things are available to you. But those things are available to you. You just have to look, okay? Before I conclude the panel, I just want the uh, panelists to do one last thing. I want them to uh, repeat the websites where people can find out more information about their films or businesses. We'll start with you, Dale. Okay, it's TowerIsleProductions.com. That's T-O-W-E-R, Isle, I-S-L-E, or AdanceForGrace.com. And if anybody wants, I can give you a business card afterwards. So if you don't have any place to write it down. I won't. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I'm the actorsgym.net, uh, which is uh, classes, representation, and casting, and production support. I'm also tripegstudios.com. So if you check that out, um, you know, you'll see that we have a lot to offer. My website is roadworkpictures.com, and you can see the four of our uh, projects that are going on now. Uh, including Firefly Jar and a documentary on the Korean War. And also the YouTube, you can search, or Vimeo, you can search the Silver Key, and the entire uh, short film is up there for you guys to watch. As well as the, uh, the donation page for um, Firefly. You can go onto that page, and you can see it says Donate Here, and you can check that out. It'll bring you over to the From the Heart Productions page. So. You can find more about Legion Films at uh, www.legionfilms.com, and we also have a uh, pretty active YouTube channel, and uh, we post pretty much a uh, video up there about every week, and uh, it's all about promoting uh, Demon of Lateran, so if you're interested in checking out that movie, YouTube is good. We also have our new company trailer up on our website, as well as our new logo, so you can uh, you know check out those things as well. And um, you know that's uh, pretty much it. Legionfilms.com and our YouTube channel will get you everything. And we're going to be making uh, another project uh, in, in the winter. Just not sure what it's going to be yet, but definitely horror. I know that much. And uh, so we're going to be looking for help on that one. You can go to our website at roadworkpictures.com, R-O-A-D-W-O-R-K, pictures.com. Or you can go to uh, check out Rising Star at risingstarmovie.com, Rising Star movie.com all right so anyway i think they were a great panel i'm certainly going to applaud though how about you come on okay so thus concludeth the panel and if you have any other questions you'd like to ask them well feel free to do so okay thank you and have a wonderful evening uh,